we did it the first time. This is so rare. Great job, everyone. That was a good team effort. All right, Protoss versus Zerk. We're gonna learn, as I always struggle with, how to wall up. And it's super important. That's uncomfortable. Uh, you can't let Zerglings in your base. I see so many players from your terrible replays that will just... Are, uh, they, they're just literally... It's just too lazy to wall off on the low ground. They're just too lazy. That's the simple version. I'm not going to worry about scouting or anything super early because all I'm going to do... Here's another thing I find a lot. This especially happens to players playing against Zerg, even Zergs themselves. Is when you scout a Zerg too early, since you don't actually know what anything means, no matter what they're doing, you freak out. I see this so much. It's like, oh, he is Zerg. That's very scary. It's like, no, 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 wait. He doesn't have... He can't build Zerglings without a spawning pool. <laughs> Love you, bro. Keep it up. Less Thank you, Hot Equinox. Welcome back for four months. I just don't you. But I'm going in. I, he's already expanded. I'm going to get in there. A little bit of mineral walking. We see the spawning pool. It's after the expansion, which means nothing crazy. He's not going to have a bunch of Zerglings early. I can actually do a one gate expand, which is pretty greedy. But that gets me everything I need. I'm going to try to have the, the same economy as him. And then... So this map has a little bit of a different layout. Usually, the best way to wall off, ideally, is have three large buildings, and then you have a gap that a zealot or an adept, usually an adept ideally, can fit in on hold position. So that way you don't get yourself stuck in your own base. But the Zerglings can't get in. So I'm going to be getting that Adept. I've got my second pylon. Second guess. Filling in all the blanks. Continually building probes. And I've got this guy on patrol here just looking around. See if he has a bunch of Zerglings coming out. And I screwed it up. I screwed up the wall. I do this so m Oh wait. I can just do it like that. Okay. Okay, you gotta be able to adapt. Don't freak yourself out like I just did. I'm chrono boosting the adept and getting a robo. I'm like, oh, wait a second. We can just put it on this side. The gap can be on that side. The only gaps left after this decade, more than likely. Oh. I'm just gonna use the shade to chase. Honestly. Right click on it. Nope. Go away. Should still be building probes. I'm gonna go check and see if he has a third base on either side. Get two more gateways. You should usually should be going up to about four gates before warp gate finishes. We're still pretty far off warp gate finishing. I'm actually going to get an immortal first. But right now usually in a typical come back here again. In a typical build. Uh, he should be trying to take a third by now. Doesn't have to be, but that's a lot of Zerglings you got, my friend. I'm checking he has a lair on the way. You can see it right there. So, and he has a lot of Zerglings. I'm just going to play it safe. Get a uh, shield battery at my wall. Get another pylon, not get supply block. She's going to get a pylon on the edge here. Build another sentry real quick. So what this means is is he's teching up and he doesn't have a third. So he's focusing more on tech or aggression. We're not we're not sure. Uh, usually the lair means you have to wait a little bit longer before you can do anything more. Chrono boost out this sentry. So in just a, a patch or two ago, one of the best quality of life updates, I think, that mostly affects newer, well, lower level players but also helps out higher level players slightly, is when warp gate finishes, unless you stop it auto-casting, all of your gateways immediately become warp gates. So even if I built a couple more gateways now, they would uh, immediately go into warp gates as soon as they finish, which is something, there's, there's essentially no benefit from not having a warp gate. So 
warp gates are just better in pretty much every way. There's no reason to have a, uh, a just a old-fashioned boring gateway like a brutal. Forge. Well, right now, the reason I'm not going for another base is I want to figure out... I'm using a hallucination scout. I want to figure out what's going on. We got an Evo chamber. We got a Hydra Liz Den. I'm still building probes with my control group down here, but if he's taking a third, he's got a third. All right, good to know. We're actually going to go... This is not that common, but uh, we're going to go Colossus. Get a War Prism. And since I see he's taking another base and I haven't taken one, I've been building units for a while. Put all these units together. Now, the important thing to note is the recall ability. With recall, every couple minutes you have the option to... Well, actually it's 85 seconds. I didn't even realize it was that short. I, I just know it's pretty short. You can recall a small amount of your units. So, like, the radius... Pretty small, but an army like this, I can. It takes a little bit, but I can bring that army back home uh, with less risk. What happened to my forge? It didn't work. Let's get in here. So the reason I'm attacking is because I saw he was getting a bunch of tech, but also trying to get economy. Oh. Let's go. I'm leaving. He has banelings with speed. Goodbye. Get some Colossi. This is actually one of the best scenarios to go Colossus. Because he doesn't have a great economy, so he can't tech switch easily. He didn't have a bunch of drones. We just killed some. Uh, and I already have the Robo. So I still have an army, so he has to he has to worry about that. He didn't kill my army there. Where did that War Prism go? I like to put it on the 2 key. Because uh, having the option to do something should be using That's that Chrono Boost as well. But I like having a hotkey for the prism. Splitting off some units. So the big threats now are... Come on, hallucinated Phoenix, you can do it. Are just an all-out attack. Like, he may have built a bunch of units and a spire. Uh, going mutalisks. Maybe corruptors, but probably mutalisks. So I'm still building probes during this. I'm doing it after... I, yep, you see how, how he didn't have any drones there? That's very important to know. With no drones there, I'm starting to get concerned. I need to construct additional pylons, which is a, a constant issue. I don't want him to see the Colossi here. So I'm going to just send the Stalkers out. They should kill the Overseer. I'm getting extended Thermal Lance. I'm actually going to get charge for charge lots and Templar archives here. Warp in a couple zealots on this side. So, if it's been like a minute since I last scouted, and he still hasn't attacked me, which is interesting. I'm wondering why right now. Does he have another base? Doesn't appear he does. Where are you going? Not No scouting Colossus today. I'm using every option to scout here. We got an Adept sent in. Just do a little bit of shift click action. More gateways added on. And get an Archon. Archons are... In my opinion, one of, if not the best unit in the game. And they are a unit, if you are... Storm is good, but Storm takes micro. Archons are like the no micro equivalent of Storm. They have like 5,000 shields. Okay, 350. But they have more shields than... Uh, how do I compare this? They have more shields than the entire health of sh and shields of an immortal. An immortal is already a super good unit. So, they don't, they don't die very easily. Oh, hello. I gotta cancel. So, Guardian Shield is gonna be super important. I'm gonna, gonna go ahead, chase him down a little bit, making some more probes. The Archons eat all the Banelings. 
because uh, Banelings are only good against big clumps of units. Big units, on the other hand, are the easiest counter. So I have this Warp Prism over here. Let's warp in some Zealots with Rapid Fire. I have a guide on that. I'm not going to go over it this second. Uh, but Rapid Fire hotkeys are pretty nice for things like warping in a bunch of Zealots or Corrosive Bile. It's a little more advanced, but uh, you can look super pro as well while you're doing it. Very important. Look good, play good. We can move in. I mean, I didn't see any part of this army that... Throw some force fields up there. Gonna use bold position to make sure I don't break my own force fields. Go ahead. Another round of force field. And then, this is what I mean. Won't work with a power field. Talk about a design flaw. I like for iron gonna send these guys over in case he has a base over here at the fourth I'm gonna build a few cannons this is when I get storm I've got more upgrades might as well get blink warp in some more Templar I'm actually just gonna right click on this to make sure they kill it and once the army comes down, the army's there. That means I can move in over here. Clear out some creep. The idea is I always have options. I'm never making it so, like, he can just fight me and maybe win the game off that if he takes a really good fight and I mess up a little bit. So that means on this side, I'm going to send some more zealots in. And if it was a lot closer game, I'd be a little bit more scared of, like, Broodlords or something. And I'd be going for a Stargate. Uh, that is the big danger of when you don't go for these guys back. That is the big danger when you don't start with a Stargate, is they can go Mutas easier. Mutas aren't that scary, but if you don't see them coming, they can really screw you up. We're just going to do this over here. And move in this way as well. He's expanding. Just keep kind of slapping down the bases. Charge lots on this side. I'm maxed out now. No reason not to fight. We're gonna bring these in with my main army. Use guardian shields for reduced range damage. Let's say they actually did King versus Least Played, so now it selects. This is, I think this mode, like, you can do it with, the, like, three people. Two, three, four people. Uh, and I think it should be played more. You can usually find lobbies on, on, especially during normal times of day, like the evenings. Even, even later at night, though. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm a vampire, so I usually sleep in the daytime, so I don't know much about how, how popular uh, the peep mode lobbies are during the daytime, but I'd imagine you can find some. But if we're not observing right now, but if you're observing, this this arcade mode can also like you can bet on the games, uh, especially if they're a little <laughs> more evenly matched. Uh, you can bet on the games. You have like different skins and stuff. It's more than just like observing a standard one v one game. So Terran versus Protoss. Uh, I feel the the biggest mistake lower level Terrans make uh, it is well one is tunnel vision because Terran is hurt the most by by not macroing by not building units by not building production because they don't have anything to make up for it. Um, what I mean by that is when you get supply blocked. Once you have to build a depot, and then when the depot finishes, or a command center, you have to start the unit. So its production only starts when you're not supply blocked, or whenever you decide to, to build it. For Zerg and for Protoss, uh, you can bank up Larva or Warp Gate charges, which gives you more of a way to uh, 
Well, you don't get punished as much for getting supply blocked uh, or for neglecting unit production. That's just, the races are not the same. They're different. Uh, so they all have different strengths and weaknesses, and that is probably one of the bigger weaknesses of Terran, especially for lower-level places. Uh, lower-level players, not places. Why am I so nervous? I play StarCraft six to eight hours a day, six days a week. It's like people, people are going to hear the wrong words and turn it off. Okay, so he's expanding. I'm going to steal his gas. Let me go. I've got the Reaper for scouting early. I'm actually going to get a little supply blocked here. And the reason I'm actually taking his gas as a Terran, I, I don't think that's something you usually need to do. But he already expanded and didn't have a Cyber Core. So that means he's. I'm just reducing his potential gas income. And it also makes it a little easier for my Reaper to do damage. I can keep easier track of where his units are going to be. But it's definitely not a requirement at all. Oh. Let my people go. Alright, we're just going to... I got three kills with the Reaper, and I've delayed his gas. So I'm happy. I'm a happy man. I'm just going to go ahead. What are you doing here? Go away, Marine. Go home. Get a tech lab there. I'm getting a second barracks, but the focus now, I'm already ahead economically. I want to make sure I don't take damage, but I want to do it in a way that, like, if he doesn't attack me, I want to build units that can help me attack later on. I don't want just a bunch of turrets or bunkers. I did build one bunker. That just keeps him from having a soccer or something come across the map. But I don't want to be focused on static defense. I want to focus on staying safe, but also finding an opportunity to attack him. Because the biggest danger is if a Protoss just has so much tech, you can't deal with it. You're not going to micro like Maru. Literally no one does. So you got to hedge your bets with other units like, uh, well, Liberators or Solid Timings, things like that. Speaking of, I'm going to build one Liberator. The Cyclone helps me defend against most things early on. Like if it's an Oracle from a Stargate, we're going to check his tech here. So there's two more gates. Remember, I I stole his gas earlier on, so that delayed his tech a bit. I see he has a robotics facility. Can I... No touching. Oh, the grenade didn't hit. So I lost the Reaper. Start stim. So what this means, there's a couple options. Either he goes for straight to Colossi, maybe. Um, I'm going to add on a little bit of barracks production, because he, he, the danger of attack is, is not very high, especially because he had all that gas. Like, if he didn't have these gases, I would think maybe he builds like a warp prism and tries to warp in units to my base. I'm actually going to put my cyclone over there, just in case. But get a reactor, get some tanks. So now what I'm going to do is try to set myself up so that way when I have stim finishing and I have medevacs completing, I can attack. Also should have gotten an engine engineering bay a little bit earlier probably. But I have a marine here and I have a liberator here. But the liberator is just scouting for the base because we're on two base versus two base. He has the same amount of base as I do. So, right now, there's no reason for me... One, if I just attack him, if I, like, siege up the Liberator in his base, why would it do damage? He just moves his Stalkers and he's like, ah, okay. And then kills the Liberator, and that's it. That's the end of the line there. So, I'm saving that Liberator. It's also, it's both scouting a little bit. And it's both scouting a little bit. And check him for a third. And also, if he does move out, and I see he wants to attack or something like that, then I will use it to do some counter damage. Maybe distract him, force warp ins at home, stuff like that. I'm getting a little concerned as to why he hasn't tried for a third base yet. I mean, I can go for a third as well. It isn't like, uh, Heart of the Swarm or Wings of Liberty. Okay. 
He had a warp in here. I stem a few marines and marauders. This is what I mean. Like, I don't need to move out. Is he going to move out? It looks like yes. With most of his units. So, that's not enough units to really scare me. So what I'm going to do is move all my units together. And I'm going to match him on the field while he's ideally distracted by my Liberator. At the very least, that's going to force him, force him to warp in more units. Oh, there's his army. I predicted with the scan. And he's out here. The Liberator will be taken out, but that got me to kill two Immortals. And maybe some more here. I'm actually banking up a lot of money. Let's add some more. Gotta stay on top of that production. Make sure I'm building depots. In fact, I'm about to get supply blocks, so. But it one of the biggest the biggest things for Terran and that people struggle with the most, and I struggle with sometimes, is that kicker. That's what the very best players like Maru and Innovation will do. There'll always be one other thing. Like even if it's just a marine in a weird spot. There'll always be something to distract your opponent. Right now I don't need to do that, but in a more even game, just sieging up that one Liberator. I mean, that CG of that one Liberator essentially gave me the opportunity to outright win the game. So. Depleted the that mineral cluster's mined out. Yeah, ready to go. That is the strength. You just keep them distracted for a little bit. And Marine Tank. Medivac, if, if he had things like Colossa or Disruptors, I'd probably be adding on Liberators. Usually adding on Liberators after, um, adding on Liberators after about four to six Medivacs, usually four. Um, maybe Vikings, but usually Liberators is what you do if you're building up your army more. And then if he has like Templar, you can go Ghosts or Widowmines, but those are a little harder to use. All right. How do they even see the Dark Templar? They have protection. Insight. It's a balance. Like, at, at, especially the lower, when your shit, more shit counters less shit. That is true 95% of the time, and the other 5% of the time, it's still partially true. So, <laughs> It's just there are other factors at play. It is a, it doesn't sound as fun, but StarCraft below like most of Gra uh, like half of Grandmaster isn't really a strategy game. I know it's not it does it's not fun to say. But in the sense that strategy matters more than mechanics, uh, it's very simply the player who will build more of a generic set of units with better upgrades will win 90% of the time up through diamond. There are just so many mechanical mistakes that uh, lower level players will make. They'll just get supply by no amount of big brain strategies. Okay, I t once again, it's almost impossible, because I'm thinking like, oh, well, Florencia went rough, like, but as a general rule for 99% of people, no amount of big brain strategies will be superior to simply just building a dozen more marines more quickly. Like, <laughs> it's just, there's no substitute. It's not like uh, Warcraft. Like in Warcraft, you have hero units. So those hero units, you really well micro at the right spot. They can change the game. There are units that can act like hero units in StarCraft 2, but it is not nearly uh, a as close. Like, 
just having an upgrade 30 Our seconds quicker and your production a little more quickly and, and I don't know, like 10 seconds less supply block is usually enough yep. to make the difference. So I saw he had a relatively early pool, but he didn't have enough gas to go for Zergling speed or, or like roaches super quickly. So I'm going to end up with a bunker. He may have gone hatchery first, and I'm supply block for no reason here because I'm bad. Does he have a third command center? I wasn't paying very close attention to be honest. You can tell if I'm paying attention with the eye tracker we got on. I was actually playing some Grandmaster games earlier, uh, which is, if I'm feeling, because I, I casted the WCS uh, Challenger qualifiers. Those will be up on YouTube for those of you who want to check them out. Um, but I was casting those. You know, the humble brag, right? I do not. I want to uh, The last couple days, as well as the GSL finals party thing. So, essentially, I was casting for about 18 hours in less than a 36-hour span with essentially no breaks. So, my voice is pretty uh, rough right now. And uh, I, after, after the couple hours were on the front page, by the way, if you're on the front page, come join us in the chat. You might actually find people you like. Probably not. But, uh, or you can get your question answered, all that. But after that, we'll probably be back to, uh, laddering more focusedly. High front, don't say high front page. They, if they're on the front page, they can't see you by definition. Because there's no chat on front page. Uh, it's just a bunch of AFK people who aren't signed in Twitch, and also all the amazing people who aren't and are responding to this right now. I mean, we always get several hundred more followers than an average night. On an average night, I'm privileged enough to get about a hundred followers, but front page usually puts us somewhere around 500, so it's pretty sick. Got the Viking out. So if he doesn't have the third base on this side, we got to get a little concerned here. Because what is he doing? Why does he not have it? I built the Hellions, but, like, he should have a lair. I'm going to go in. I think it's a Spire. Now, a good solution to most of your problems is killing all their drones. I'm going to add some barracks on here. There's a roach one there. So I'm trying to make sure I'm doing some production behind. But obviously this is going pretty well. Um, now that I've, I'll be honest, essentially killed the majority of his drones, I really just need to focus on having units. I'm building all these barracks up, get the NG base, make sure I don't get supply block, mine up with three out of three in gas, shift Q back. The Viking picked up a couple kills. So I thought I would see a spire, essentially. I thought I would see a spire. I'm actually gonna go ahead. I'm not confident if he just outright attacks with all his units, I'll be able to hold it. So build an extra bunker. Get plus one. And get more upgrades. I already started stim a while ago. So there are some builds. you got to be careful. The biggest, one of the biggest Bronze League Heroes issues. Uh, I, I mean, this entire, what we're doing right now is mostly going over the biggest Bronze League Heroes issues. But is building a bunch of upgrades for no reason. It's like, I've got plus one infantry weapons, I got stim, I got combat shields, and I got four marines. He's, uh, 
I did go over how hero units aren't really a thing uh, in StarCraft 2. <laughs> As a general rule, you want to have at least double digit of something. You want to have at least double digit supply of something before getting key upgrades for it. There are exceptions, but like, if I'm not gonna have 10 supply of bio by the time plus one or stim finishes, maybe it's not time to go stim. Or if I'm not gonna have at least like five hellions for blue flame, maybe not time to go for blue flame. Things like that. That mineral cluster's mined out. And usually the best time I, I should have been building two in the way I'm out of axe, but we'll go with it. It's close enough for now. Um. Usually the best timing to move out is right as your medivacs are finishing up. And that's what you'll see. That That's what makes it very easy to cast top tier Terrans. Is once you know what you're looking for, you know exactly what they're lining up. Because Terran upgrades, this is the strength of Terran upgrades. Is they probably have the biggest impact. Um, generally. Like, the timing of stim and combat shields is much bigger than even, like, blink most of the time. So, Terran players will do their entire build around, I'm gonna hit when, well, I'm moving out with 1-1 combat shields. Uh, those, those things are all finishing for me right now. Well, I'm a little late on moving out for them, but... Nope, can't build there. And that is usually the best time to just say hello. Because you have maximum power and they have minimum strength if you're attacking right when that happens. Scanning to get rid of the creep and make sure I know what I'm dealing with. More supply depots. Not enough best speed. Add on. Out of supply already? No, don't. Did he leave the game? It's uh, in peep mode. You just type GG and you're good. That's uh, no. He left the game. Well, the entire idea is, and this is why I think this mode is good. You just starting out. You got a few, couple people you want to play with. You're that one friend who was like, "Come on, guys. We don't." We've been getting beat so bad by people with Twitch TV in their name and Apex Legends. Let's come try StarCraft 2. Isn't it that deck game from 2012? It's like, no, it's free to play. By the way, it's free to play. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, FFT Private. The tier two sum. For 18 months. Okay, I just don't need more minerals for that. Matador 8. For the sub shredder blood for a year. I just don't enjoy. Yeah, I I probably could be advertising that more while I have a, a larger audience. StarCraft 2 multiplayer is free. You can play it right now for the low low price of a lot of download space. It's like 30 gigs, but uh. Uh, the only things you have to pay for are additional co-op commanders, even though with Twitch Prime you can get one for free right now on top of the, the three basic ones. And uh, the campaigns. The Heart of the Swarm and Legacy of the Void campaign, if you want to play them. They're only about 10 bucks a piece, but they do still cost 10 bucks. Multiplayer, completely free, unless you want amazing skins, in which case, skins not free. Unless you make Twitch Prime. I don't know. And then, for only $2 a month, you can construct your pylons more quickly. No. Thank you, Vandit49, gifting 10 subs to the community. The lucky freeloaders. Oh yeah, you can literally have, with the newest Twitch Prime pack, it, it, it works if you're not in this mode, right? Uh, <laughs> I think. I'm not a... What did I break? 
Uh, peep mode doesn't let you use all your skins and stuff sometimes. I don't know if it's just not updated. Or... Ruin! I did not SCV scout. I've gotten a little lazy. We're kind of focused a little less because uh, the commentary, uh, I have plenty of guides and videos and stuff. Um, and they're updated. If they're not updated, then it will say so in the description. But pretty much everything besides the Protoss one from uh, Legacy of the Void are updated, even from earlier Legacy of the Void. The Proto Protoss had a pretty significant change about two years ago with the removal of the Mothership Core, and I made a whole new round because, like, up until Diamond, you can still use Marines and Tanks and uh, Roaches and, and, and Hydralisks, like... And you just gotta focus on making sure you don't die and getting good macro. But Protoss did have a essentially fundamental design change with the removal of the Mothership Core. So I did remake uh, several of the what I considered outdated games. So what I'm trying to say is go watch my videos on YouTube, but not right now. Or if you're gonna do it right now, put it in a different tech. A monitor or something. I like turtles. So, I did notice he had a Twilight, but I didn't really register it, because he could have DTs. I need to save up energy for scan. I don't see a Dark Shrine in. He is expanding, but... Never trust a Protoss. My dad trusted a Protoss once. Okay, Rest in peace. Did I get the engineering bay? Oh, it's right there. Go ahead. Good job. Uh, also, don't trust Terrans. Essentially, just don't trust anyone. Especially not a dirty, cheesy, random player. Like myself. Alright, so I saw you expanded a little later. I'm not really worried about going to kill him. Complete. Especially if... Okay, so the big danger is a war prism right now. The danger is not him just attacking me. Oh, do not attack your own factory. I'm gonna send one marine out from the bunker. Are you attacking me, my friend? Those marines are looking for a prism. Nope, he still has plenty of units at home. So he's going, I, I see, what I'm noticing about his army, there's not a lot of tech. There's not a lot of uh, the big strong units. There's a lot more of, no thank you, whatever. There's a lot more of just gateway units. So, scout for a third base. We're actually going to send this marine out to go look on the other side. I'm taking a third command center because I feel pretty comfortable with the amount uh, of units I have now. I feel like I'm safe enough. Ready for dust off. Let's get some more upgrades. Actually, before I get more upgrades, let's go ahead and add on production. Because as I go towards the third base, if you don't, this is another uh, classic Terran mistake: is just simply not having enough production. You can queue up five siege tanks, but that doesn't mean you're spending your money effectively. Because four of those siege tanks have already spent your money, but they're not doing anything, and they don't exist yet. So they're your future children. Look forward to that. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is don't queue up a bunch of units and feel like you're macroing effectively. 
Uh, that's not how it works. It's it's only slightly better than not building the units at all, because it gives you a false sense of like whether you're effectively spending your money. Scan. I think I can handle five zealots. And this is a pretty nasty position to siege up tanks. Need more gas for that. Because it's it. This is actually a vision blocker here. Gonna scan. You coming down? He's coming down. Can we kill the Nexus before he does? He just gives it up. I have a third base. Just building the right army and putting it in the right spot in a timely manner has now put me in a pretty significant lead. I don't need to kill him. I'm gonna go ahead and put a marine over here. Shift click a marine around the mini map just in case he took a sneaky base out there somewhere. I'm gonna get my own base using my camera location hotkeys. I believe it's the camera hotkeys command if you want like a two minute guide on that. Which are very useful. I learned them first for Zerg for larva injects, but now I just use them for my bases for everything. You can use them for anywhere on the map, camera locations, but I just find myself using them like 95% of the time just on my bases. So, I have too many medivacs. That is too many medivacs. I should have built some liberators already. Get a bunker. I'm getting some turrets. These are for warp prisms. Gonna scan. There's the army. Especially against Archons, Liberator is quite a good counter, because Archons, for all their bulk, not much range. They're like a bodybuilder trying to do a sprint. Okay, it's uh, not what they're designed for. So, what I want to do, I'm actually going to set it up like I was talking about a kicker. I want to fight that base. I want, I want to go take it out, but he now has a big enough army that if he's in position, he's likely going to be able to fight me. Maybe not 100%. Depends on where the tanks are sieged. But I want to do whatever I can to draw his attention away. While I'm already... Oh. Speaking of attention, let's go drop these guys in. Looks like he's going to Colossi. The army is moving out of position. I'm going to stim these. I no longer care what happens there. Just going to focus on this. Can you guys go kill this Colossus for me real quick? That's a lot of damage. Okay. He's attacking his own Nexus, which is real nice of him. But the bait and switch. Let's see, does he come down to fight me? He's still stuck at the top of the ramp. So I will use his little wall against him. Come on it. It's fine by me. The tanks, I'm actually going to try to target fire on the Colossus. i go back a little bit here. The storms are scary, but not scary enough. Upgrade complete. But I didn't need to go in. It's, it, it is important, though, to know when you can kill someone. Because I've seen plenty of players get way ahead and overthink what to do next. Sometimes you just go kill them. Uh, sometimes that's the best strategy. Because if you don't, there's a chance they do the same thing to you. You get way out of position, and suddenly it's a disaster. We got a couple more games. Uh, I, I do want to cast, I think, the final qualifier, like Epic versus Jon Snow. 
Uh, I'll probably break that one down. I was going to do that today. Um, and then we'll see where my voice is at. But once again, if you guys are on the front page and you happen to have it unmuted for some reason, come join us in the chat if you, well, if you, if you care, if you enjoy it. Um, and th there you can find people who are usually more willing to answer your questions than myself and plenty more information. Uh, I've been playing StarCraft 2 for nine years. It'll be nine years this year. Uh, uh, not very coincidentally, StarCraft 2 released nine years ago uh, as of July. So I've played like 40,000 games. I'm currently Grandmasters is random. Random is uh, all three races as opposed to just one. Um, you just have a random chance of being one of the races when you load into the game. Uh, so pretty pretty good-ish. And I like to do a lot of casting and yelling at Twitch chat. So hopefully we are interest aligned. We require more minerals. Right now I'm in a uh, peep mode which is also known as 1v1 OBS, which is, is an arcade game mode where a bunch of players sign up to a lobby. Uh, and it, it's a little bit more involved than just playing a 1v1. Uh, it's something you can spend a couple hours with friends, just keep playing matches, even if it's only three or four people. Uh, you can easily just keep playing. It has a, a betting system as well. And right now, I've, I've specifically taken players who are... Uh, one, who don't regularly play viewer games against me. We play viewer games pretty often. Um, and mostly lower level, because I'm focusing on really just simplistic builds. That doesn't mean they're bad, just simplistic. But simple is good, because uh, it's easier. And there are plenty of times when simplistic builds will beat me on the ladder as well. Yeah, if you want to if you want to see well if you want to link to the guides I have a new player's guide to StarCraft 2 which I made when StarCraft 2 went free to play um, that explains what race you should pick what I think you should do to start out where you can find additional resources uh, it's literally a new player's guide and and also I think it applies to players who maybe haven't played for five years or something uh, what's changed what's the same? Uh, what should you be looking for? Stuff like that. And then from there, that contains a lot of information about, like, I have dozens of guides and stuff for each race. I, well, I have a YouTube video every day. Sometimes the videos are multiple hours long, like WCS qualifiers. So, it is what it is. <laughs> I stream every day, besides Thursday night, where I work on the YouTube videos for the week. <laughs> and uh, is there anything else follow me on Instagram and I've gotten I have now posted I think four photos this year on Instagram maybe three which is almost as many photos as I posted in three years combined so uh, Instagram is hopping uh, I've gotten dozens if not hundreds of likes Okay, which I think translates into hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, right? That's how it works. That's what they told me. But if that's not enough, if you want to support, you can subscribe. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, Twitch Prime, merch. We do have merch. I keep forgetting to promote it in any way. It's just the Streamlab store, but I mean, you want a nice generic logo t-shirt? Then, uh, yeah, you can make that happen for a slightly uh, high price. Especially including shipping. Especially if you're not NA. But yeah, we can make that happen. Don't let your dreams be memes. Oh, uh, he has units. They didn't say he was allowed to make units. I zoned out this entire game completely. I have not been building units. All right. Queens, you're gonna... It's your job, Queens, to handle this. You got this, right? Yeah, they didn't tell me he was allowed to build units. 
I uh, forgot. The thing is, queens are good. I was building queens, so. When in doubt, so I think this is for Zerg players in essentially every matchup. It's not as true in ZvZ, but it's still very good in ZvZ. When in doubt, build more queens. You don't know exactly what he's doing in the first five, six minutes of the game, which sometimes you won't, uh, especially if they actively hunt down your overlords. Um, having five, six queens. So Cyril, Cyril, you guys probably know Cyril. Uh, he has a hotkey, you know the select all army hotkey, which exists now for those of you coming back, by the way. Um, Cyril has a select all queen hotkey. So essentially, if it's like, oh my god, I forgot to build units or I just don't want to, he has a, he always has his queens on a hotkey, including the ones he has at his bases. So he's like, all right, everybody, all the queens. Um, Got a new queen they're just, the they're just very good. They heal each other, they're not armored, so they don't take extra damage from, like, stalkers or immortals. That is, a uh, Colossus there. So, it's like we're playing like it's 2011. Colossi aren't bad, but, like, they're not just a unit you build in PvZ, unless you know for a fact they're going for, like, Hydra lane. Uh, otherwise it's a risk. Okay, now I'm gonna get a, a spire. Because if he invests hundreds of gas in Colossi, Colossi, despite how how tall they are, do not shoot up. So, important concern. I see he's taking a third base. Gonna hover over my supply, see that he has... Well, I have 69 drones. And right now... I'm just gonna build up Roach Hydra Corruptor is the it's it's not a it's not a fun counter like it doesn't involve all the fun units, but it's an effective counter. You just have the numbers, you have the upgrades, you're good to go. Is he gonna warp in DTs? Is he supply block? See you, my friends. <laughs> he faked me out by probably being supply blocked at that time. What a sneaky devil. You never expect that. <laughs> and that's why I didn't warp in any unit. <laughs> gonna get the attack upgrade. Gonna get some. Now. I kind of need to see if he's switched into a bunch of Archons or something. His Ar Corruptors do very little against Archons. Don't look, look at me. Look at me. Look. Hey. Please come back, whole army. All right. So this confirms he wanted to move out. And that I bought myself some extra seconds there, which can make all the difference. He's back again. What if I did the same thing again? Let me make sure I have my hot keys set up. I'm putting the queens. I shift clicked them onto the same hot key. The wings got in. They're gonna target the Colossus. We've got plenty of Roach Hydra. Some transfuses. You got a couple more players. Oh, we got three more. Yeah, the links. So, there is a select all army hotkey in the game now. Where it's exactly what it sounds like. But that can be a crutch. Uh, it has its uses. There are even some pro players or uh, some Dutch announcers that really rely on it. But sometimes, like, wings get into your base, and you don't know how to use control groups, then you have to decide whether I lose my entire base 
or I attack. And that's not uh, always a great decision to have. It's, I, I think it has its place, but it's important to learn without it, or at least learn what the weaknesses are. What I'll see is a lot of players, as they move up, they'll either have already built the bad habit of constantly using the select army hotkey, um, or, or, well, there, there are two options. One, they're trying to break that habit. There are a lot of players I see, usually they're around Platinum or Diamond, when sometimes you get severely punished for not being able to do any real multitasking. Um, and I'll see them playing around it. Like, they'll be avoiding hitting any hotkeys because they know that it'll screw up the Select L Army hotkey. Like, like, let me give you an example. Like, a Medivac's coming into the main, uh, and you know it's just a Medivac. Eight Marines and a Medivac. But they won't attack with their 50 roaches because they they just literally have such a reflex to hit the select army hotkey that they know they'll accidentally drag all the roaches they have in the main. So you'll see players who are actively trying to avoid it. It's like trying to try not to use your crutch, but you can't walk without it. You gotta just learn to walk. At least crawl a little bit. So it's, it is it is a crutch. It can help you walk, but not always the best. Thank you, Shiok and Star, and new new 8866 and Striker Trace for uh, the subs. Thank you, guys. Oh, he's not Protoss. I did not need to have this Overlord here. <laughs> what a noob. Usually in ZVZ, you send your Overlords across instead of leaving them at home. Because the only anti-air they have are queens. So the queens can't walk very fast. Brenda and friends get back pain off creep. So your, your overlords are usually pretty safe in the early game. And it's very important to know if they're making a bunch of zerglings and going to run them across the map to try to kill you. The reason you keep your overlord at your second base a lot of the time in Zerg versus Protoss is because oftentimes they open up with a your second overlord. Oftentimes they open up with a Stargate and have things like Phoenixes which will kill it. Uh, so there's no reason to risk another Ovi. And because of cannon rushes. Because if you don't see it coming you can't stop it. So speaking of seeing things coming, I see he does not have Zergling speed. And he's getting a lair. I cannot allow that. I'm sorry, Dave. He is not allowed to just do that. Because he has no units, though. Which means the counter to no units. Might be getting this by now. Uh, is units. Just gonna rally. Uh, I, I, Zerglings are pretty cheap, so I'm going to get a, a third hatchery as well, because I have 27 drones at the moment. Making sure I'm continually injecting to get that extra larva. Yeah, he's walled off, but he doesn't have the transfuse energy here. We're in. He can make roaches now, but... You can't just go to a lair with no units and without a hard wall. Because you die. So, the, the backup wall would not have saved him. Y you need to have at least, like, some more queens in production. That's just far too greedy. If he, if, it, if he had gone for, like, Zergling speed or if I saw a Roach one already done, I probably would have just gotten my own lair. But that was literally just... So he, he went lair first. He built Queen, then immediately lair. Uh, and since he didn't have a wall done, 
or a spine crawler or anything. I'm already going for zergling speed. Might as well make a bunch of zerglings. Thank you, Band of 49, for six months. What's the fun of 10 minute games? Are you saying, like, that's too short or too long? Because 10 minutes is about a little bit over average for your pro games. 10 minute games are like, well, well, at the Bronze League Heroes level, though, uh, 10 minutes is usually the no rush limit. <laughs> Uh, because right around 10 minutes is when players remember that there's another player in the game. Uh, which is always fun to watch. The record is something. No, the record I've seen is 18 minutes of literally no aggression. Just, we're building our bases. And, uh, it is, it is amusing. And there's always that phase. Players are like, well, I'm, I'm going to build all my buildings in a row. And they're going to be beautiful. And I'm going to have five pylons right next to each other. Because that's yes, pretty. Thank you for gifting to the community. Lucky Freeloader Grip 91. Thank you for that. Great job, huh? Go ahead. Our command center's been upgraded. So TVT, they can also build Terran units. This is a key concern. Ah, uh, and that is, that's going to be at the top of my list of things to deal with. I'm actually, since I did an SCV scout, I, I to be honest, I kind of forgot. Um, I'm going to get a bunker early. Because... A couple Reapers or Hellions can end the game. In in most mirror matchups, it's pretty easy. It, like there's a certain there's less leeway for uh, early builds. Like there are certain things you're gonna have to do because they can build the same units as you. If you just build the same units but way slower, then they can kill you. So I've already gone for the expansion. Which can sometimes put you in an awkward spot. He has expanded as well. Where are his units though? Nope, I'm not gonna risk it. Oh, there's a Reaper. We got it. Oh. So I need to make sure I'm building behind this. Notice his factory, it's not lighting up, which means he's not producing out of it. Uh, so that way I know. He's not about to have a Hellion finish or something. That's going to make it a lot harder for me. Throw a grenade. Uh, we're going to back off before something like a Hellion finishes. Getting a Cyclone, which is just good basic defense. I mean, the best way to scout your opponent is to attack them. Because usually, especially in the early game, they have to show you what they have. I'm going to open up with a Raven. I'm going to get a third command center. Because now, I've seen he has the same tech as me. I killed some of his economy. But it's not very likely I can build enough units to kill him without... Like, there's no reason to risk it. So, when you're ahead, get more ahead. And the best way to get more ahead is get more bases, get more money. Get some more gas here. Let me go in and see. He's adding on more barracks. Super important for me to note. He has a medevac. Doing a little bit of fancy footwork here. 
Don't want to spend too much time microwing. So. How do I scout a turtle Terran slash Protoss? Bing Carrier slash BC Rush. So you just contradicted yourself. Um, essentially, if they're turtling, it becomes much more likely they're going for Carrier BC Rush. Um, if they haven't, if you can't attack them and they have like siege tanks and bunkers and you haven't seen anything for several minutes, then that means that it's very likely they're doing something like Carrier BC Rush. Uh, they can't have it both ways. They don't have this. A lot of players, especially at the lower levels, I keep saying that, but since we have so many people on the front page, I'm going to go ahead out on a limb, because on an average night, most of the people in the chat don't play StarCraft very regularly, especially not competitive StarCraft. Uh, I'd say it's a little more likely now, especially. But um, they can't magically have enough money to sit there defensive and turtle up and also build way better units than you. Uh, unless you're literally not building workers uh, or getting bases, then they can't both have better units, a bunch of defenses, uh, and more money. Like, it, the map doesn't check out. So if they're sitting back, like, for example, thank you, Vandal. Uh, if they're sitting back, 10 subs to the community, and not attacking you, you have to assume... They're, they're building either high-tech or a big army. So if they, like, build a bunch of cannons or bunkers on two bases, you take a third base. You don't have to kill them. I know this sounds crazy, especially for Terran players. You don't have to attack into all of their siege tanks. I know, it's hard not to. It's so much fun losing your whole army to siege tanks over and over. But you don't have to do it. And I think if if it was just illegal for for players below Diamond to attack into the second base of their opponent, then the players who were affected by that would win like 20% more games. Not without more supply, we're not out of supply already. So he had an army over here. There was a big. There is a significant amount on the minimap. I don't know what it was doing. I'm checking for third bases here. Gonna get the armory. I'm a little supply block. He does have a third. So the big timings are when players expand and when tech finishes. Like, I have medevacs now. Uh, I see he's taking a third. I'm going to have 1-1 one, one finishing. I have all my production up, so I'm not, like, waiting to actually get that going. Why is this Marine still alive? We're going to see his main army. It actually is more sizable than mine. So I need to build. Just build, LOL. Mineral cluster I'm going to make sure I can get the 2-2. Two because -two. even though I have a sensor tower, it doesn't really give me the coverage I need. Oh, we see he's moving in the front. And you're going to, in higher level TBT, you see a lot of this, like the scanning back and forth. Because getting out of position for even a split second opens you up to essentially just outright dying. So. You see he's moving back. I'm going to get another factory. We're going to get some more racks for production. I'm going to send out marines to scout. He did a good job building up that army, but... I'm not going to commit into, well, commit to attacking him if I don't need to. So the best thing I think to do here, since my tanks can definitely defend me, as long as they're in the right spot, I'm not going to risk my army being out of position. I noticed when my 1-1 finished, 
my 1-1 one, one upgrades on my Marines, he only had 1-0. And since I'm starting my 2-2, two, two, oh, should probably get in there. Shift click and try to get some damage slash have him back off. Alright, so this will probably open up the map for me. His army right here. Because he's moving back to defend this. Which means now I can get on the map. Gonna get this production up. And I noticed that his tanks are at the back, so when they see Joe. When they see Joe, uh, my Marines will be hitting them automatically, essentially. Where is the army? There's his main army. I see no reason to risk my army. But right now, I'm just consolidating. Gonna build some more medevacs, continually scan to see if he's trying anything. We well, see he doesn't have a fourth, by the way. Gonna back off a little bit. He may try to jump me there. Because I'm just gonna join up with all my reinforcements. I've been building back at home. Very important to be building those. And at this point, I just need to keep track of them. Ready for dust off. That mineral cluster's mined out. Now up. On. So Viking air units have Got slightly more vision than ground units because they fly. It's not. It's it's just one more vision I'll range. But that means if you have air control, you can siege up your your tanks can shoot farther than they can see. That's important to point out. So now I see he's giving up this area. Means we can move in here. Marines. Target down the orbital. So having air control on top of just being able to shoot down things like medevacs is pretty important. I'm gonna have another army I'm bringing in. I gotta be a little careful here. This is a bit of an awkward area. I'm gonna try to keep his attention. Anti-armor missile. So I've successfully moved up another round of tanks. Get some more command centers and barracks. Make sure he doesn't have these bases in the corner. I think I just saw him load up a medevac. He stemmed all his units, making it a little bit easier. We're just going to move back here. He's gonna try to jump me here. Anti-armor missile should help here. Gotta be careful about vision. Planetary fortresses are pretty good at what they do. I should have started my 3-3 a while ago. Two marines survived and I'm supply- I've been supply blocked at 196 for far too long. Anti-armor missile? Units can have negative armor. Armor reduces the damage from each attack. Um, how did you even get in here? It reduces the damage from each attack. So, anti-armor missile does three less armor. If you have negative armor, you take more damage from attacks. So that's kind of important. Obviously. a bit of a massacre, but I am I have more bases. I have better upgrades. Actually, I'm not sure about the upgrade point. I have air control. I'm willing to take a fight like that because I can afford to lose. 
And I didn't think I was going to lose, but even if I did, uh, I have time to rebuild and I've been rebuilding. So I'm just kind of sitting waiting, trying to make him take a fight. Depleted that mineral cluster. Alright. Gonna leave a few marines down here. And a single medevac just to hold this position as we angle downwards. Can't do that. We're at maximum supply. Oh, I have a few reinforcements at home that I forgot about. <laughs> TVT is a methodical matchup. Like, you gotta... Sometimes you just gotta take it slow. Let's not lose this here. Because tanks do a lot of damage. That's the summary. They're very scary. Oh, so we can be a little fancy here because he has no more wings. Which means I can drop right on top of the tanks. Some of them within safety range. Because they do have a minimum distance they can fire. Get through that. Yeah, at this stage, like if the game was a little closer, I'd be going for air control, like Vikings and range liberators, stuff like that. But I've been waiting for him to get ground down for a bit now. I'm maxed out on upgrades. Yeah. We're narrowing down. There's literally only one place he could be. There's not that many bases on the map. I think it's time to go. And disable those tanks. See if you have mine. Let her step a little bit. By the numbers, boy. This better be good. Go ahead. Get on that CVs. The boys are pulled. Upgrade complete. I'm pretty sure medevacs are gonna outdo. Because weapon upgrades do not apply to uh, SCVs, unfortunately. He's got he's got the best words. Who else do we we got two more? Dreadnought and Potato Lord. Dreadnought finally figuring out how to use a group in game. If you haven't yet joined the Winter SC2 group uh, on America's Battle.net, you can just use the group command in the chat as well. Uh, groups are different than chat channels. They're still very easy to find, but they're more permanent, making it easier to join them again. Uh, they have some additional functionality, all that. So. And, and yes, there are multiple groups. If you just search winter on the groups, there are multiple groups. It's the one with almost 9,000 members. It's not the one with two. Just FYI, I've gotten that question far too many times. Feels like it should be self-explanatory, but that's maybe why you need to join a group to get basic common sense. Tell him I, I I don't know if I told him I raised, but we're gonna tell him again if I didn't. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys for joining us. I stream every day around this time, uh, usually starting around 9 p.m. Eastern. This started because 
Uh, originally, when I started playing, I was in high school slash college. Uh, and the only time I could stream was in the evening. Uh, besides the fact I was already a vampire, because I would stay up too late and uh, play video games like this one. Um, so over time, just built up an audience at vampire hours. And, well, we're still going. So... And for those of you that are are not are are from uh, other beautiful countries like Europe, or do not keep Vampire Hours uh, upload on YouTube the best every day, um, whether it's Bronze League Heroes, cast from WCS, my own games, Angry Coach, there's a variety. Uh, usually just one upload a day, but sometimes that upload is like six plus hours long. Usually not. Usually not. But sometimes. So if you subscribe on YouTube, etc., ring the bell, whatever. Gift subs always go to non-subscribers. Believe it or not, yes. Uh, you can only give subs to non-subscribers because if you gifted subs to subscribers, then nothing would change. I it would be cool if you could give an extra month to people who already sub. I think I've suggested that before, but uh, we finally, it took, it took like three years to get gift subs, all right? But let's let that. So I'm not, I'm eagerly awaiting when Amazon wants more money. But by the way, shout out to Twitch. Thank you. Uh, if you guys are on the front page right now, unfortunately we don't usually get over 9,000 viewers. And I know many of you aren't logged in and have no idea what the Twitch TV is if you have this unmuted at all. But if you don't, have it muted. Well, guess what? You're special. You know why? Because you can hear me. And uh, you can join us in the chat. Uh, I have Discord, all that. If you actually, like, if you played my target demographic, I know, I know this probably doesn't apply to most people. But I, my target demographic is your... 20 or 30 something, you either lightly play StarCraft 2 or you played years ago, you kind of moved on to other games, and you kind of just don't feel like you have enough time, um, but you want to get back into it, it's free to play. You like watching streams because it feels it's a fun game to watch, but it's too hard to actually play. So you're just going to subscribe to me so you get the feeling of actually playing StarCraft without having to actually play, uh, play StarCraft. So that's what we're here for, and if that is the case, make sure to subscribe with Twitch Prime, uh, and I'll give you your honorary badge of Twitch Chat Grandmaster. Give me a Winter G in the chat. Thank you guys. Nightlight, Raulin 175. And in order to get your very own Winter G, subscribe today with Twitch Prime. Uh, Dreadnought, we'll play Direct Strike and you'll be first invited after this game, by the way. Because Jimmy says we haven't run an ad and we're only on the front page for a few more minutes and we got to run an ad. So, uh, just FYI. Sorry, you waited all this time. Unless you really want to 1v1 up there.
so I'm, I'm, this is a cheeky build, for sure. But let's see if we can do the distractics. I never, I never realized years ago people would pay for the opportunity. Well, not in this case, not actually pay. Just sign up for the opportunity for me to beat, beat them down in front of thousands of people. But well, thank you guys. Uh, those of you who participated in the peep mode, you can find that. Let me, let me just show you. you can find my arcade bookmarks. Arcade also free to play, but. I am literally, oh my god, we're gonna have to work on this later. I am literally the worst of the best. I am the lowest ranked Grandmaster player. Jesus Christ. Don't judge me. I am the worst best player on, on America's in StarCraft 2. But uh... On the arcade, you can bookmark games. You can find my bookmarks with the bookmarks command. But uh, I'm, I'm partial to Direct Strike, Mana Battle. Uh, there's some other ones. These are the ones you'll find games for on a regular basis. What we were just playing was Peep Mode. Um, and you can pick which map and have that one with your friends. It is just like an advanced 1v1. But thank you, guys. Uh, Jimmy says we haven't run an ad all stream so uh if you could pause ad block that'd be awesome we gotta i mean it's starcraft 2 in 2019 we gotta make that dirty esports money i know ads are annoying and loud and all that but uh thank you guys for watching i'll be right back in uh, just a couple moments welcome back everyone i'm winter and i'm here to talk to you all about twitch prime twitch prime when you take your mom's Amazon Prime account and you subscribe, you connect it to Twitch, it's so easy. All you have to do is connect it to Twitch, and guess what? You get Twitch Prime benefits. Now, what does this mean? Very first, you get a little crown next to your name. Nobody cares? I know, nobody cares. But wait, there's more. You get every single month some special, special benefits for many different games. A bunch of games no one cares about, but also this month and these three months, StarCraft 2. The StarCraft 2 benefits include a co-op commander bundle every single month. You already missed out on Abathur, you should have been on top of that. But guess what, this month is Swan, the Terran Mech Engineer. You get the Swan Machine Bundle. And you might be like, I don't care about co-op. What even is co-op? Who cares? Well, guess what? That includes the commander, the announcer, the, the console, but wait, there's more. It also includes the ability to put emotes like Kappa Ross as your spray in game, so you can spray a Kappa Ross, or a Hey Guys, or a The Thing, or several others in chat. So, if I finally have your attention, make sure uh, to connect with Twitch Prime, find it in the battle now, you can figure it out, there's like a bunch of stuff on that, and also, now I can't confirm this, but since every single month, did I mention you can subscribe to a channel of your choice for free? If you subscribe to this, a StarCraft 2 channel, at least mo mo most of the time, much of the time, uh, it, it guarantees you'll feel a lot more invested and actually follow through and find all this free stuff instead of complaining later like, oh, I wish I would have done that. 
Subscribe today. Operators are standing by. Thank you guys for sticking around. I know ads are annoying. Um, but, uh, esports, right? Can we also do a weekly brawl? Is it one that's going to make it take an hour long? But we're going to spend some time. Actually, before we get into the next match, a rapid-fire Q&A. So, uh, I'll be answering. If you're new or coming back to StarCraft II, I'll answer your general questions. If I do have a guide, especially one, one of those, I have some advanced guides, some comprehensive ones, which are between half an hour and two and a half hours long. But I also have some that are less than ten minutes. And if it's less than ten minutes, I'm almost certainly just going to tell you to go watch that. But otherwise, I'll try to answer. Would you play Pult? Of course, but my MMR is far too low. I've already built. I've already killed an Eidolon that has nothing to do with StarCraft either. What are some other great RTS games? I've heard. Uh, I've heard of Brood War. Do Colossi get the vision of an air unit? Yes, they do. But they can also be hit by air units. Uh, what's the easiest way to beat M Canning? Apparently, make battle cruisers or reapers. It was really sad. Besides the games, it wasn't sad, which was all the rest of them. Can Polt take on Maru? I'm sure he can take him on, but I doubt he'll beat him. Two base, seven gateway, charge lot, five fifteen timing attack. Good or bad? I mean, sounds good, I guess. Uh, <laughs> depends on how many charge slots. Is Terran Mech an actual viable thing in SC2? Well, it's not viable in any other game, but in SC2, it's pretty good. Uh, how do I defend my third and drops in my main as Protoss? By having observers and not using the select all army hotkey. Uh, Montreal in September? Is it in September? Talk to me at some other point. Uh, I'm new to SC2. I'm ba wondering what a basic Terran build is. Use the Terran command. I have a basic Terran build guide. What do you prioritize at Templar Archives against each race? Um, you, you build Archons. Archons are good. I've not played in three years. How has early game Terran and Zerg changed in recent patches? Really not that much since the beginning of Legacy of the Void. There's just a few other mechanics to watch out for. Um, but early early game Terran and, and Zerg is, especially the very basics, fundamentally the same. There haven't been big design changes like there have been for Protoss. How can I get my hair like yours for the right price? Is DT drops OP? I, do, I don't understand the question, and I won't respond to it. I'm coming back to SC2 from a long absence. Is Immortal Charge on Archon still good? If my macro is great and I hate micro, it's perfect for you. What's your main race? Caucasian. Can you quickly show how to spawn a crap ton of toss units at once? Use the rapid fire command. Will you play Parasite Zeta on stream, or should I go to sleep? At what point did I give you the impression that was going to happen? Is Maru SC2's Flash? No, Flash is SC1's Maru. How many probes is too many? Probably about 80, but 70 to 80 is good. I meant Twilight Council versus each race. It depends on what you're up against, but your, your good A-move option is charge. You should only be going blink against very specific things. Do probes like to probe? Only on weekends. Are you my dad? No comment. Mass Queen or Mass Reaper? I don't understand the question. Who is your favorite SC2 player? It was Pult, and it is Pult. Okay, we're going to have to see if he plays again. It used to be Pult. Now I, I'm a big TUI fan. We're going to have to see Pult in pro games, and I think he's streaming right now, so I get I, I miss out on his stream every night because I'm also streaming. Um, is a mothership worth getting? In the ultra-late game, but uh, overall a mothership is incredibly expensive and only worth the investment if it if part of your end game army. Will you remain in GM for long? At least uh, 12 to 24 more hours. Is there such a thing as multitasking? Technically no, but practically yes. Uh, do dinosaurs have boobs? Ask your mother. Is there such, uh, are you my dad now? Once again, no comment. How is arcade nowadays? Better than ever, honestly. Uh, arcade, 
there's a active support for several games and uh, even even things like Direct Strike with Premium Arcade. I like arcade a lot. I play arcade probably like 20% of the time I'm playing SC2, even on stream now. So. Do you think TY could beat Alpha Star if he played Zerg? I don't speak in hypotheticals. How hooked are you on Direct Strike? Like, I like it. It's the closest thing to a mobile game that I play on a regular basis. What's a good TVT build? Uh, Terran. Use the Terran command. Am I your favorite? It's very doubtful. Uh, any news on Google's AI since it beat up Liquid? I like how it's just like the whole team got beat up. Uh, nothing official recently. How many games a day should I play? I think that's actually a very good question. I go over it in the new player's guide. But, uh, overall, I think an average amount of games to improve is five games per league that you're in. It, you should expect to improve relatively uh, quickly and methodically with five games per league. So five games for bronze, 10 for silver, 15 gold, 20 plat, and so on and so on. That's like the baseline to maintain a certain level pretty consistently. Five games for bronze, I say, because you have to log in and play games, uh, which will get you to silver, and then you're actually playing some games. Um, what custom maps are good for practicing, or should I just ladder more? Uh, I mean playing like 4v4 BGA, Tremana Battle, or stuff like that, where, or just team games are pretty good for taking some of the pressure off while still having normal StarCraft mechanics you have to have in order to play it. Where to get up-to-date builds? If you're below master, up-to-date builds are not what you need, even though it, it is good to have them. Uh, SpawningTool.com is where you can find uh, actual written out build orders, but once again, up until, ma well, really closer to GM, uh, you're playing more of a macro than a micro game, or you should be at least. Best not StarCraft games. I specifically asked for StarCraft related questions. That is literally the opposite. Are you a cow? No comment. What will you stream next after SC2 is dead? Uh, people have been asking me that for five years. Ask me in another five years. What differentiates the top pros from other pros? Uh, prize money. Also, top pros, like like the very top, WCS contenders, like BlizzCon contenders, like Cyril and Innovation and Maru, it's just, they can play perfect every game, and also outplay, like, it, it's most, a lot of it is mind games, and just understanding what their opponent is going to do before they're going to do it. And that's the, it, it sounds dumb, but... A lot of pros can play at that level, like they have perfect macro and can have perfect micro, but the reason they don't beat, like, like for example, most players don't beat Serral, is because Serral already knows how to play perfect, so he's going to get in position to know even if you do the right thing, it's not right enough. I know that wasn't well explained, but uh, players like that, a, a great example I think is TY, Stats is also another player who does that a lot, he's just, he's ahead of you. Even though you're not behind. It doesn't make much sense. But... Thank you, Collins1. Why don't you compete? Uh, I'm not a big fan of the pay cut. Uh, what's your brief description for why you think RTS is great for the front page? Well, we're off the front page now, but... In StarCraft 2. StarCraft 2. Um, there's no other 1v1 game. Really, there's no other esports game that is as competitive as StarCraft 2. Uh, in, in the sense that it's the most dynamic, and you can have games that are two minutes long or two hours long. Usually it's somewhere in the middle. Um, but there's there's no other true individual test uh, of skill and strength and decision making as there is. It's like if you blended chess and poker, uh, and even like golf, it was, pick every 1v1 sport put in there, and boxing, you put it all together because you need both, uh, you be, need both mental skill, but you very much need, uh, physical skill as well. Just ask Flash about all his wrist surgeries. That's, uh, a little bit of a yikes, but... <laughs> What's the point of getting better in StarCraft if you aren't going to necessarily win any more games due to the matchmaking system? The top players win most of their games. For example, like... 
Cham is 146 and 47. Shadone, 37 and 1. TLO, 21072. Me, 215, 136. That's pretty good. But once you get to the very top, you do win.